everyone. I'm your host, Heather Ashley, and welcome to another episode of Women of Her Story, a podcast dedicated to celebrating women who have made or are making an impact on our society. Today, I have with me fitness monster guru trainer, Megan Ward. Thank you so much for joining us today, Megan. Hello. How are you guys? I'm so excited. (laughs) So... To everyone listening, today's interview is going to be a little bit different than usual as I want this episode to focus mainly on a few things that I believe are so important. That's body positivity, being healthy physically and mentally, realistic expectations and goals, and how we can bring all these things together. So you're in a place right now, Megan, where you've never been healthier You have your own fitness classes that you've designed, your brand uh, in Los Angeles called Mega Moves, as well as an online presence, obviously, especially right now. But did you ever struggle with your body image and getting to this place? Absolutely. And I'll say that (laughs) 100,000 percent so, um, because that's how I am here today and why the brand even exists, you know, growing up as a dancer and always being in the mirror um, body and what your body was supposed to be and how it was supposed to look was always somebody else's opinion. So I didn't even grow up with a good um, relationship with my body until I got to LA. And, you know, with dance being what I wanted to do, and it is still something that I am pursuing along with all the fitness stuff, um, body image really held me back. So I had, you know, I went through high school struggling with my body. I went through college struggling with my body, you know, mentors and educators telling me I would never be a dancer because of my body. And then I always kept pushing forward, found myself out in LA. And, you know, then out there is where I found what health and fitness was and how to lose weight appropriately and healthy. And sure, I had my roller coaster of journey even out in LA because now it's been almost seven years since I've been in Los Angeles, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Now it's out there, yet it feels like I just got here sometimes. I am in a place now where it's it's not an all or nothing mindset or relationship with food Mm -hmm. um, because really the relationship with your body is the relationship that you have with yourself. And that took me a really long time to figure out even when diving in to like mm-hmm. the fitness world. Um, but there's so much to go into depth about, you know, my personal journey, which is why I'm so passionate and why fitness will always be in my life. No matter where I go, the mm-hmm. book will speak for itself. And it's, you know, my story, but very comparable and relatable to a lot of people's stories. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever set unattainable goals for yourself? Absolutely. So like when I like, first started to lose weight and it was like consistent because I feel like a lot of us especially dancers we are in this yo-yo effect so we're like oh I feel really good and then we gain weight and then lose weight and then it's just like a poor cycle but when I was like first had like lost weight like I lost like 20 pounds in a good amount of time and it stayed off and I started getting compliments and all this attention about my body it went from my body being not good enough to being like, Oh my God, like almost like praise. And like, I didn't know how to handle that type of affirmation. It was very weird and strange. Um, but I became Miss Fitness. (laughs) Okay. And so then from there, like I started, you know, you're in an industry. So it's like, you're, you're to a point, your body does get you certain types of jobs, whether it's like commercial print or fitness print or what have you. And so I was in this scholarship program at a time and I was my strongest, I thought, because I was like, oh, I'm skinny, I'm strong. Um, And you know, these are, these are, I don't even use the word skinny anymore in my head because it's not, it's not healthy. And so, but I was, I, I was all these things and I was preparing for a photo shoot and you know, with a fitness photo shoot, of course you have agents tell you like, you know, you need to be at your top tier. They send you recommendations on what you should do. Like it's very much a bodybuilder mindset, but without that preparation with it. So like Mm -hmm. bodybuilders go into like months of preparation where I had like, you know, 
a month maybe to get to where they wanted me to be or where I thought they wanted me, you know, because it's like mm-hmm. expectation and affirmation again. I did that and that kind of, and I right, I reached the goal. It was really unhealthy. I lost even more weight and my, I was just depleted. So like I water depleted, I did all these things and that kind of set me backwards again. So like I reached this massive goal that I was super proud of and then I just pushed it unhealthily for another month and from that really couldn't attain it. So I fell into old habits again of like, okay, well now I'm just going to eat whatever I want because I'm hungry and, you know, I've lost this weight, but then guess what? It just came back. And then my activity level didn't match what I was doing. And then I gained this weight weight again. And I was like embarrassed. I was like, um, I was this fitness guru and now what's happening. But I really just overtrained my body and it gave out on me. And that's honestly where the mega moves thing originated from because I was operating of like this place of mega fit and I'm so fit this and like this is how to be fit um but when I didn't feel fit anymore it didn't seem authentic it didn't seem real and I had a hard time like anybody else trying to start again and what I tell people to do is like just get up and move so my brand was literally a birthplace of me telling myself Megan move so that mm. mega moves. Um, and it's it's carried into so many different other things, but that's how we got here. <laughs> that's amazing that you were able to recognize you you at least had enough self-awareness to notice these unhealthy things happening in your brain to say, yeah. okay, I just need to get up, I just need to move. I just need to move around, I need to just get moving really because as soon as you say I have to get healthy I have to get fit your brain is putting sure. too too high of stakes I think on Absolutely. yourself because I, I kept putting too much pressure on myself to get back to where I used to be to get back to how I felt because I felt so alive and free of this like almost burden that was on my shoulders for so long you know like the reason I wasn't a dancer was because of my body or the reason I wasn't making it and getting this job was because of my body. And that wasn't the case. I put that self on me based off someone else's opinions. Mm -hmm. And once I, you know, it's still hard to fall into, like you have to, it's a really a mindset shift. And Mm -hmm. I kept trying to go into like over exercising or like extreme dieting and um, my body would, literally physically hurt or reject and I my brain knew better like I so the only option was to you know come over your ego kind of Mm. it's this egotistical way of thinking of like I I would never tell a client to do this so why am I doing it to myself Mm -hmm. you know so it, it you have to it's a very humbling experience um but again some like people get it because we put extreme restrictions onto us all the time Mm -hmm. or expectations to for us and I just had to bring it back down to the basics Mm -hmm. what are some ways to set realistic and sustainable goals absolutely um so you want to be very realistic with like where you're at right now um And so take into account, like, what are you doing? What are you aren't doing? You know, if, um, for me, when I started, like, I just didn't even like vegetables, to be honest, like a variety of vegetables. So like, I would, you know, make it a purpose, make it kind of like a game of like, what do I like, um, that I I don't necessarily gravitate towards, but now I do because I started introducing those foods in earlier and you know, it had to be that way. Like we all know eat your veggies, but especially like right now in this time where we have time to grab anything we want, the last thing that we want to do is really to go for those vegetables. But like when you, you know, have the balance of like, okay, I have a full plate of food of my vegetables and carbs. Don't eliminate your carbs. <laughs> Cause mm-hmm help you as well um you're still going to be filled up uh you're still going to be full because you filled up on also veggies that are very you know sustainable 
you also have to take into account to like, well, how much activity do I do? You don't want to start from zero activity to working out every day because then the next week you're going to be so sore you can't move. So <laughs> that realistic things like like long walks and making sure that you even just get outside for a certain period of time a day or like desk workers, if you're sitting all day, just get up and go on a walk like during your lunch hour or whatnot. My mom, I've seen my mom completely change her life by being adamant about doing an hour walk every day. And like, it's how she lost her weight. And I mean, it took her a year, but like, she does not look like the same person Mm -hmm. that a year ago because she was consistent with that. So if that's all that you can do for a year, proud on you, then you can start adding in like other strength exercises and dive into all these things. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I, and I've always been this way. And I think it's like the dancer mentality too. We always want something different. So I look at a lot of different forms of fitness, gather what I like, and then kind of have a mix of my own, but it does have like a progression to it. So am I getting stronger through this movement? Yes. (laughs) Mm, That's really great advice. Diet culture has people clamoring for a specific number on the scale. Is this a dangerous mindset to live in? I think for the average person, absolutely. Because your body can look completely different at the same weight. I even a while ago posted a side-by-side picture of me at the same weight. And it was like when I first started my journey and then where I am like now. And if I were to just look at the scale, I would be disappointed. And I used to do that. Like I would weigh myself every morning. And if I didn't lose weight that day, my whole mood would kind of be around that. Like, what do I got to do today to lose, you know, two pounds tomorrow because I didn't lose anything today. And when people don't know enough about nutrition or enough about just how the body replenish itself, you're not having a healthy relationship with your body. It's a good tool if you're doing it the right way. But I think it's an easy, easy trap to get stuck in a negative mindset for just the average person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, muscle weighs more than fat. Yeah. So like if you have more muscle, you're definitely going to, you know, weigh the same if you didn't have muscle to begin with at the beginning of your journey. And so like the composition of your body can completely change. You can have a smaller waistline and less visceral fat, but Mm -hmm. the same weight. Mm -hmm. I, I go back to like the bodybuilder vision because it's like they, people think they have to be super extreme, the average person, but these these athletes are very, very disciplined and have like a mindset of like, let's say the Wayne Rock, like it's just like, it's intense and that's their life and it's a freaking lifestyle. So they do weigh their self every day and they do do like um, extreme things, but this is their sport. Now mm. for a person, this is not your sport and you don't have like three hours a day to dedicate to this, but you can take the aspect of what they're doing to be healthy and follow that but they even look at the scale as a progression and even Mm -hmm. some athletes you know you still want to have your cycle and if you're doing it right like you're going to weigh different at a different time of the month Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a huge thing to take into consideration when you're on your health journey because like I'll, I'll even go back for a second like with my personal journey I was on I knew started to realize I was unhealthy when I lost my cycle and I mm-hmm. lost for like a year. And when it came back is when I started to like gain weight and all this stuff. And I didn't realize that it was a good thing that my body was gaining weight and that my cycle was getting back on track. Because when you, I mean, you see this in gymnasts all the time. It's because the demand of activity and stress that you put on your body, because your body doesn't recognize that the stress you're putting it under is a good thing. Stress is stress. So working out is stress, the stress coming, like Mm -hmm. it's all stress. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to have like a break from this. It's causing your body to be in a fight or flight position. Mm -hmm. So then for me, that was like my cycle stopped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being the young 22 year old I was, I was like, this is great. I don't have a period, da, da, da. But (laughs) I realized that that was super unhealthy. Mm Mm-hmm. And Mm -hmm. 
it, that's a sign that your body isn't optimal. You want to be at your optimal. And for me, that's being able to keep up with the amount of activity. And that might not be the image of what you see or where you want yourself to be. Mm -hmm. And I think Mm -hmm. that will get lost. As women, men experience this as well. But for the sake of the question, I'm only speaking in terms of women. Um, There's a certain standard that we feel we're being held to for no explicable reason. We have makeup companies saying, you know, you got to put in eyelash extensions and crop tops are in. So I hope you like your stomach out. Yeah, I I struggle drowning out that noise. And I'm not shaming anyone who loves makeup and crop tops. I am one of those people. But how do you think people should approach these things when there's things you can't change about Mm. yourself and your own personal journey? How do you, do you struggle toning those, those noises out? Absolutely. And I, I notice when I struggle, when I'm in more of the entertainment industry and I'm in front of a camera or I'm in an audition room and I feel I just the energy of other people sometimes is what's really gets to you and then I have to remind myself no I'm stronger than this because when I'm in I wear my put on my other hat and I'm you know trainer mag and fitness mag in front of you know other people and giving a class like I am the strong beautiful woman that I am in both places now why does it get skewed and I feel that but that's from so many different years of feeling pressure being a certain way and wearing a certain thing. And like, you know, those thoughts are only coming from like the past and also like yourself. No, everyone else in that room and everyone else also putting these projections onto you are them and their thoughts. And so that's what I have to remind myself and what then I tell other people. And then to also just check in with yourself and be like, am I my best today because when you feel your best and you do your best and you do all the things and you don't fall short on your walk and your nutrition and you just don't throw in the towel and say I give up when you're actively working on it like you're gonna feel great and Mm. those things those imperfections that you're nitpicking at you're not going to care so much because you're moving forward which is the brand you know you're making moves forward in the sense of like, I know how I don't want to feel and I want to feel this way. So whether that's a mind shit, a mindset shift, wow, that's hard to say, a <laughs> mindset shift or a, an activity, your emotion changes in that moment. And so then you can be the person that you are and the person that you are is not your body. It's your personality and how you present yourself. And those insecurities that you think everybody sees won't be seen, you know? Mm -hmm. One time I heard a girl in, uh, in the bathroom complaining to her friend about like the size of her wrists. And I was like, what, what? Oh, and it's just, there's so many things that number one don't need to be changed, but, but like, yeah, there's nothing you can do about your wrist yeah. size. There's nothing and you can do. And there's nothing you need to do about it. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's sad because I think I think we're in an age where people our age, you know, and I'm I'm 26, turning 27 this month. But um <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in this age where it's still young, but like I've been able to shift that mindset from separating what is real to what is almost not where like this younger generation that grew up with the iPhones and the social media and the magazines and everything being thrown into their face that this stigmatism of like, this is the correct way to be. And it changes, you know, you know, we want the curvy figure or, you know, for me at that age, it was like the thin slim model body. Like there's always going to be some sort of thing. That's the new trend to keep up with and do. But when you're young and all of that stuff being thrown into your face, you don't know how to separate what is real to what's not, or to to like, what can you change into what you cannot change? And it is 
sad that some of it is very vain. Like to hear that, like the risk, like, uh, why is that a thing? Like, <laughs> no, I, but I get it because like, I'm also just, I come from a family of athletes. So like I'm bigger boned and I have a stocky structure, which in the dance world, <laughs> when do, doing ballet was my, where I thought I was going to go, wasn't accepted. And yet I needed to accept what was real in order to like then be happy. And I think mm -hmm. people soon realize that when they are trying to change the things that they cannot change, they're upset and being upset gets to a point where you're almost fed up and that's when people change it's like mm -hmm. you, you reach a level of I can't live like this anymore and what do I need to do mm -hmm. and a lot of the time it's not what do I need to do but what I what do I need to add into my life mm -hmm. yeah I feel like that that's a much better phrasing of that because mm -hmm. as soon as you say, okay, well, I have to go get all these vegetables and I have to do this with those. It's like, well, I'll just add in some carrots to this meal. And then it totally doesn't feel like you're, it doesn't feel like a chore or a job mm -hmm. for me with all these dance teachers. And even in college, like I approached one mentor of mine and I was trying to get like a, a week exemption of school but because I was actually going to go out to LA and work on this project and the conversation went very different when I was just asking for permission which I would have gotten like credit for I was like hey I'm gonna miss a certain amount of time here she was like I think you would do better in this like school program if you lost 20 pounds like she gave me a number and I remember that number being the number that was stuck in my head and the number that I was shooting for on the scale, like even years after all of this, mm. I'm like, oh, this is where it was. Like I was always told that I had to do this and then told that. And when I changed that had to, to a get to everything changed because like I was never fat. Like I thought myself of. Like, that's how I truly thought that I was, and that wasn't the case, but that's how people made me feel. So I had to change the language and be like, I am healthy. I am very healthy, and I am healthy enough that I have two legs to dance and walk and work out. I get to do this. This is a privilege, like going to the gym and working on myself and working on myself, even if it is like to have a better body, it has a positive reflect on my mental state. And mm -hmm. I get to do this. And that changed everything for me. People are like, Megan, you love going to the gym. And I was like, some days, no, I don't. But <laughs> me moving is, is like I get to do this you mm -hmm. know and I know how I feel when I allow myself to fall into like a mundane relaxed like mm -hmm. I give up mm -hmm. type. for me it's a very oh it's almost very spiritual I like mm -hmm. if I can show up for me I am also then showing up for other people would you say that most of what you said is major point in mega moves Oh, yeah. Um, I always say with mega moves, many moves today, mega moves tomorrow. Because if you do many things throughout your day, all of those add up to a bigger, mm -hmm. aka mega picture. So it's like, you know, with even like the walking example that I gave with my mom, like she did this mini action every day that completely changed her life. Mm hmm going back to like a food example, if I have a person that never eats vegetables and I start adding in vegetables every day, even if I don't like it, you're eventually a going to like it and find what you do like. And now you've completely changed your diet by making one decision. Like I'm not asking mm -hmm. you to completely change everything. That's, that's the problem. I think with most, you know, fitness programs and, and everything out there, they want to completely change your life. Well, how does one I, you know, throwing in my brand there again, but how does one move throughout the day? What is your lifestyle like? Like, I'm also on the road all the time. Do I make the best decisions on the road food wise? No, but I prepare 
and enough to where it's like, I know these decisions that I'm making will allow me to have room to when I don't have a better option. So like I will prepare food, I will have like bags of you know, either different protein resources or protein bars and some veggie option that, you know, can stay refrigerated with me. And when we're at a hotel in the middle of nowhere, and the only thing is to get is a burger, I'm not going to beat myself up because like I, I had it's balance. And, Mm -hmm. you know, people want this balance, people preach balance, but how much balance do you actually have in your Mm -hmm. life? And it's a very 80, 20, type of balance. It's not (laughs) 50, 50, like, which is suck. It's sucky to hear that, but it's like, you know, when it comes to your fitness, it is like 80% nutrition, 20% fitness, but 100 and thousand percent your mindset, because Mm -hmm. I'll dive into another topic here because I had to have help with it as well. But when it comes to your mindset, even around food, the same person can eat the same thing. Y'all can have the same biological makeup as well. Just say you have a copy. You're talking to your twin. If one person has a negative mindset when they eat something that they think they shouldn't and their body is immediately um, responding to shame and guilt from eating that and twin B, we'll call them twin B, is eating the same thing but has no thought behind it, Person A is going to have a negative response into their body. This like guilt and shame does have a neurological response to like the cells in your body. It's a lingering stress that does then lead to weight gain and then does lead into other habits that fall trap into like, oh, I shouldn't eat this. So let me just like eat more. Like it's, it's kind of like a really negative plunge where Mm. you just go deeper, deeper, deeper down until when you want to remove that shame and guilt, like your twin B did, it's already in the past. And guess what? He's moving forward and not thinking about like, Oh, that cookie or two, you know, destroyed my goals. Like that's not the case, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it's forgiving yourself and showing yourself enough grace also within your journey. Cause it, it never ends. You know, there's mm-hmm. always going to be a new goal. There's always going to be a um, something you're working towards, but it shouldn't affect your person. Mm. It's also the the whole, I ate all salads for three straight days. I can have this whole cake now. And it's, or like, I'm going to reward myself with a cookie later. Like that's not a healthy relationship either, because then you're putting qualifications on the food for no reason. Like if you want to eat a cookie, eat a cookie. Absolutely. And then move on. (laughs) on. And then I think what a lot of people don't realize too, is like, cause you can get very scientific into like what is in food. So I'm going to go back because I think it's relatable, but, you know, bodybuilders count macros and it's like every type of food has a certain like macro count in it. And a cookie could have the same amount of breakdown as say like a sweet potato and, you know, in an average person's mind and it's like, okay, sweet potatoes are super healthy, but what if we keep eating more sweet potatoes? You could have had a cookie for the same amount of thing. Now, it all comes down to like what's more nutritious and dense, but in the sense, you don't have to beat yourself up about having a cookie or two. Like it's removing again that shame and guilt behind it and also knowing exactly that what's in it is not going to hurt you, <laughs> you know, yeah. not going to ruin your, your goals. And, you know, it comes to your way of eating based off if, if anyone comes to me for that type of advice, like I'm not, you know, a nutritionist, but I do, you know, get a lot of questions regarding that because it is such a heavy part of like my journey. And of course the field that I'm in, you know, trainers get asked all the time, like, what should I do? Um, because the biggest changes that you will see is the work put outside of the gym because when you're only going to the gym say for an hour there's still 23 hours of the day how are you spending the rest of that time and you know of food it becomes such a big part of our you know society and culture and how we gather 
I think for someone who's like a very social person and then they start to be on a diet, it's very stressful for them. And so I'm not going to tell a person like, uh, I tell myself like, okay, you're not going to eat anything at this party because that's just a not going to happen and not going to be realistic, but like you can set yourself up around the day in order to like be comfortable with yourself. If that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's very important to dive in and learn different ways and to explore and open your mind to whatever type of way of eating you want to go down, whether it's the macros or vegan or this or that. Like I'm a huge component of keeping all food groups in your life. Um, but that's opinionated when it comes to what society says, because it all mm. changes. It all like nutrition will always change. There will always be a next bad, but actually let me, let me rephrase this. There will always be a new bad in nutrition, but nutrition will like never change. (laughs) Um, Nutrition is nutrition and you know what feels good in your body and what you should do. It just takes time to explore that when you're making a change, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like, especially right now, um, I'm hope I'm hoping by the time this airs, we will we will not be uh, all quarantined. Oh, but hope so. you know, <laughs> right now, everyone is. I I feel like I see it all over social media. Like, oh, you have to, you're at home. Take this time to be like the absolute best, like prison gym you can be. And that and then there's people on the complete opposite who I feel like they see they see all of that and they see they they just say, I I can't attain that. So I'm just right. not going to at all. Right. And uh, I I feel like speaking of balance you were talking about, we we have to find that, especially also with being when you go grocery shopping and then you have the whole day at home. So then you find yourself just making walks to the fridge all day and it's tough to to find those. Do you have any tips for, for snacks throughout the day? Because not snacking isn't um, possible. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like, um, I would say even, you know, times are different right now, but let's take it back even into like, the grocery shopping experience. It's like you, they always say, and I say they, people, nutritionists, <laughs> always shop on the outskirts of the grocery store because that's where the produce is, that's where the veggies is, that's usually where everything that goes bad fast is. And that's re- really what you should be putting in your to your body. But people like snacks. I will say I'm the first one that is such a snacker. I love snacks and something that I realize that I don't need to eliminate in my life because it can be added in as a balance. Now, when you do go grocery shopping, not to over purchase or um, shop when you're hungry, because then all of that stuff is going to be in your house. And Mm -hmm. if you don't have control over like opening a bag of chips and putting them away. (laughs) Why would you set yourself up for that? Now you can have chips in the house. That's totally fine. But like how you like go back to them and whatnot is, you know, a thing you have to play with yourself. Now, usually when I see myself or someone go back continually to the bag of chips, I'm like, okay, you're hungry. You're actually hungry. Like you don't want to necessarily fill up on a whole bag of chips. Like go get yourself a balanced meal. And then you can have the chips with your meal, you know, like it's, you want to eliminate the, I don't want to label it this because it's, it's serious, but like the binge and I'm doing air quotes right now, people can't see me, but the (laughs) um, overeating, you know, mentality of like finishing what you have on your plate. And, you know, we are in a first world country and there's our countries out there where people don't get enough food, but we do have that luxury where you don't have to finish your plate if you're full. Mm-hmm. You can take that plate, put it away, and just assess yourself. So, like, if you do continually find yourself going to, to do snacks, find yourself that balance of the protein, carb, and fat because you're going to – your body's going to break it down easier. And mm-hmm. it's going to make you more full and sustainable. So you have – say, if you want chips, you know, just put, like, a piece of chicken with it and – Um, you know, with a side of salsa or something that has a little bit more substance, 
and also please your your palate at the same time. I'm a huge like ground turkey with like broccoli and like dip a chip in it. Like I, I mean, I'm from Texas people. Like I love chips and dip. Like that's, it's a part of like who you kind of are. Um, but you can go back to that protein, carb, fat breakdown because your body wants something sustainable, you know? I love and- that idea of having the chips, putting them away. If you find yourself going back to the chips, you're hungry. Yeah. So have a meal. And I, I think that's such a good awareness thing. I actually hadn't thought about that. I personally, I like, I know they're a little more expensive, but I like to get things that are pre-packaged in like the serving size because yeah. then you have to actively open, like open another one and realize Absolutely. I'm opening another one. Absolutely. I should... Uh-huh have some eggs or something. (laughs) Yeah. And I will do that. Like even on like healthy things, like let's say like mixed nuts, like if you open up a jar, okay, they're small and a serving size is small for a fairly high fat content. And you know, fat is awesome. I'm not, you know, dissing like any sort of other diet out there either, but when you can easily take a handful of nuts and that be the same calorie content as a whole meal would be and you're not going to be full off of those handful of nuts so when you of course buying a you know bigger bulk I was mm-hmm. saying if you know that you're notorious for keeping your hand and putting your hand in and grabbing a handful but not really knowing how much you're actually grabbing and then eating take a measuring cup put it in a ziploc baggie And especially like for parents out there, you're putting food away or making lunches um, for your kids when they are going back into school. Like just use that as like a good measure of a, this is also going to save me money (laughs) in the long run. (laughs) And it's also B going to help me proportion control and, you know, save, I don't want to say save those calories because that's such a different, that's a mindset thing as well, but you're saving yourself for a more luxurious meal. Mm. You yeah, know. absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I love almonds, but yep. I also, I love wasabi and blue Ooh. diamond has a wasabi soy sauce almond and you can't eat very many of those because right. they'll burn your mouth. <laughs> That's a great point. Okay. I love spice. And like, I know some people out there don't like spices so much, but having any type of like extra flavor on top of like anything especially when it comes to hot and spicy stuff helps with like portion control. Like I'm like, people laugh at me all the time, but I probably like, like have mustard with everything, but it has like this turmeric. Um, it's not hot, but it has that like spice to it where it's like, okay, I pair it and it's good for a inflammation. And, um, it adds that extra something that you want that makes you keep like, keep you from eating the same thing over and over again. So I'm a huge component of spices and hot sauce. And so I love that you just made that point because it's, it's true. Something that has like extra flavor to it that's hot and almost burns your mouth helps. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like six or seven almonds in and I'm like, yeah. Like even though they're good, but guess what? It's satisfying your taste buds. Like you're, your palate is being um, fulfilled with mm-hmm. spice. So like That's I the, tell people I think, that. Play yeah. With- yeah, definitely. I was going to say, because I I also feel like even things that aren't a super spicy flavor, but things with any sort of seasoning or, or things yeah. like snacks that actually have a good seasoning. I mean, Doritos are delicious, but that's like not real seasoning, <laughs> <laughs> right, you right. know, but like things, even with like, uh, I love roasted carrots yeah. with like balsamic vinegar and those you only eat a couple because they're really flavorful and they're rich and they're delicious. And then you're like, all right, I, uh, I feel satisfied for this moment. Yeah. You kind of want to think of it like too. It's like, let's say like a Thanksgiving meal is super rich and super flavorful. You're not going to have that every day, but like, and nor should you, because like when we think (laughs) of Thanksgiving, it's like this copious amount of, of food, but like 
when you give yourself the opportunity to sit down with a plate of that looks like a lot of food, you're guess what? You're going to eliminate more snacking. You're going to feel satisfied and you're not reaching for something that yeah. you're not necessarily hungry for, you know, like, I think that's where that hunger comes in. Like, if you think you're always hungry, I'm going to get into another point here. Do it. You have to assess what are you actually hungry for? A lot of us are, are bored right now and we have a lot of time to sit with ourselves. But these, this is like an opportunity to see like where these things are coming from because it still exists with us even if we have a busy schedule. So these feelings of hunger are not necessarily your stomach telling you that you're hungry. It's your brain because you're covering up some sort of emotion or self that you want to not work on, but you know you're you're hungry for something else out there than rather actual food. Mm. If, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before we get to our last two questions okay. or conversation <laughs> topics. <laughs> um, do you have anything else you would like to add about fitness, health, dance, and the like? Yeah. Well, I have, for my brand in general, like it is meant for everybody. Like I think everybody should get up and move no matter where you're at in your journey. There is a place for you. So don't be embarrassed to start. And don't be embarrassed of failing because I think this then goes into how you should live and how you should approach any goal in your life. But if you don't fail, you're not shooting for success because the success, when you look at the back end of it, is a mixture of all these failures. So it's not failures, but it's just something that didn't work. So you are going to go back and try again. And so there's never point in your life should you give up because it's, we, you know, this is getting a little deep, but you do have this one life and you don't want to give up on yourself and fall short of what you know is possible inside you. So that's where like the essence and the excitement of mega moves comes it's because every day you have an opportunity to be a bigger and fuller version of yourself and mega moves is what helped me stay within the dance industry and so like those in entertainment and those dancers trying to change their body or trying to make it like I hear you and I feel for you and you know there are certain ways to move that will benefit us and that will hinder us. So it's like, pay attention to what you need in order for your craft and what you're actually training for, instead of trying to just reach an image. That's my, like my biggest advice for any young girl. It's because I needed someone like myself at that age mm -hmm. it is to, it sounds so simple to do, but it's not, but it's to love yourself you know, and to look at yourself in the mirror and find a friend with the mirror mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of treating it like it's an enemy fighting back against you. Um, I needed someone when I was really young to tell me that and to, you know, get out of like uh, just an unhealthy relationship with myself. And it wasn't my body, but it was just with myself. Mm. That, that's that. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. Having a a nice relationship with the mirror instead of it being the enemy. Yeah. So I ask the same last two questions okay. to everyone who comes through the podcast. What is your second favorite color? Oh, second favorite. Okay. Yeah. Second favorite. I'm going to, I'm going to go with red. Um, yeah. Why? Why, Why red? Why red? Well, my, favorite color my favorite color growing up is purple mm -hmm. and now in like my present day it's very much a uh, maroon like I'm very much into those earthy tones but I say red because red is and as my second favorite is because it's very powerful mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and it is a mixture of like um that purple and maroon vibe that is my favorite color so red okay. is, is that loud mega uh, mm -hmm. type of vibe 
<laughs> and then finally, what, in your opinion, is the best part of being a woman? Ooh, that's a great question. Can you just say it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> of course. So what, in your opinion, is the best part of being a woman? It can be a multitude of things. It doesn't okay. have to be just like one. If there's layers... I mean, I, them. I like that you just said the word layers because that's where kind of my brain was headed. Like, as women, we're very multi-layered. And I don't want that to sound like men are not. But women have the opportunity to be like any type of way. And it's that women confidence that comes through that women need to tap into that makes like the her power that confidence and and I we have so much that women can do like we birth children and we go through these things monthly that our body is constantly changing that we experience different things than than men do sometimes that we have this like kind of innate power to move and to move in a way that is very expressive and it allows us to, you know, have that motherly intuition or to connect with relationships in a different way. Like people say women talk a lot, but we just, I think women have a lot to say and our power comes from within. Mm. Like it's kind of our gift and it's our responsibility to live up to that and not fall short of all the gifts that we have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a roundabout answer, but yeah. no, that I really made me think, and that's a really good question. You nailed it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining us today, Megan. Absolutely. I had Body- so much fun. <laughs> good. Oh, I'm so glad. Body image and acceptance is so important, and I believe you are the perfect person to discuss this topic with. Thank you. That means a lot. And thank you listeners for tuning in again. I hope this episode gives you comfort in yourself or at least a few tools to help you get there. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Uh, It helps the podcast get noticed so that more people can be inspired. You can follow us on Instagram at Women of Her Story Podcast. And you can also send an email to Women of Her Story Podcast at gmail.com. But until next time, be safe, stay healthy, and show the world what you're made of. 